Good afternoon. It's Wednesday, the uh, 6th of January, um, and I'm back in the reading nook um, for what is my first unboxing of 2021. Um, it is a, it's a bright, very chilly day, which is why I've got a hot cup of tea. And um, I have at least one parcel to do today. So let's get to it. This is the first. Um, find out what this is. Tag. And we have, right, the reveal. Okay, this is Beit Al Azif. Uh, um, a magazine for Call of Cthulhu Mythos role-playing games. Now this is the third issue, um, a magazine dedicated to the cosmic horror of Cthulhu Mythos role-playing games. Three new adventures uh, ranging from murder in 1920s Berlin to two-fisted action in the, in the Arctic to modern survival horror. Reviews, interviews, advice, history, comics and more. Um, now I've reviewed the first couple of issues um, over the past year it's a solid um, magazine style, sort of like fanzine. It, it, it's got good content um, and it's available uh, PDF or print on demand. Um, so what have we got? Um, okay, so uh, well, basically uh, we open up with obviously uh, Houses of the Unholy, which is the, the editorial. We go into Sacrifices, which is the, um, uh, uh, basically the, the letters column and then we um, go into um, Cthulhu in uh, 2019 um, a retrospective um, and this cover this is by Dino Engelhart um, and this covers everything throughout the year of, of, of um, uh, 2019 and really so what you've got is um, a recap of all the titles that were released for uh, Lovecraftian investigative role playing in that year, um, and it's a use. This is really is a useful um, uh, resource because essentially, it uh, you can um, quickly work out what you've missed, what you you know what came out this, this uh, that year. I use it obviously, um, and basically for me it's because okay, what did I miss reviewing that year in particular? Um, so there are a couple of things in here that I that, that, that I have not yet reviewed, um, but will this year? And go and it deals so not just a Chaosium, but the license, licensees as well. So uh, Stigian Fox, um, at um, uh, uh, Golden Goblin Press, um, uh, Sons of Singularity, obviously the publisher of Bert Al Azif. As well, so it goes into uh, magazines and amateur publications. Uh, there are a couple here that I don't actually, I don't actually get to the hypographica, which I've not looked at yet, but would like to at some point. Um, obviously, uh, then into Delta Green um, and beyond. Um, so Delta Green into Palgrave Press and Trailer Cthulhu. Um, okay. Uh, also, Fate of Cthulhu, um, and there are a couple of other things as well. So the Cthulhu Alphabet and Dark Trails. Obviously, um, we are. I'm still awaiting the, the publication, the basically the shipping of the Cthulhu Alphabet in the UK to review it. Uh, and the same for Ghoul Island, which is Sandy Peterson's um, basically Cthulhu um, infused um, uh, fantasy role playing games, uh, adventures, and so on. Um, at, uh, and it even goes on to the Miskatonic uh, repository. Okay, uh, I so far have only reviewed. There are about two hundred or so titles on there. I've reviewed about fifty. Um, I, you know, it, it's it, that's a task in itself. Um, we look at the Kickstarters as well. Um, so, In the Darkness and The Dare, both of which I've reviewed, one that's Sentinel Hill Press, and again, Golden Goblin um, Press, A Time for Sacrifice, I have on the review pile. And I will get to that. Um, 
where are we? Okay, um, I, 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 then uh, Murder of Mr. S, 1920s scenario, um, set uh, basically uh, in and around Berlin, which is great for Secrets of Berlin, uh, which is one of the best uh, Core Cthulhu supplements for a couple of years, a couple of years ago or so. Um, really solid source book and, and sort of like campaign um, sort of like framework. So essentially you've got three scenarios in there which um, take place over the course of the decade of the 1920s and you can easily fit scenarios in between those three. Um, so this is the murder mystery. Um, basic, it obviously it's the publication, um, I mean, as, as, as clean and tidy as the layout is, there's a certain roughness to it, obviously, things like the map. Um, and that's fine, you know, it, it's, uh, this is a near professional product. Um, so not necessarily absolutely perfect. Um, but don't necessarily take that as, 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 as a criticism because of that's of what it, what, what it actually, what, what it is. Um, uh, we have a site of an antiquity, Cappadocia, which is the um, uh, basically the, um, the region of Anatolia um, in Turkey, with the cities um, basically in the walls. And we have uh, something never seen before: an interview with Sandy Peterson. Always good to read an interview with Sandy Peterson. We have another another adventure in the House of Glass, which is a modern scenario. Um, we'll see how what that is like when I come to it. I mean, uh, basically, it promises body horror. I believe a, 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 a modern survival horror. Um, and it appears to be inspired by one one building. Um, let's have a look. Uh, which is the Franklin Park Conservatory in Columbus, Ohio, and the, also basically two, and the Jewel Box in St. Louis, Missouri. So they're probably worth referring to when you're preparing that scenario. Um, okay. Uh, and we've got um, various handouts. Always like a good handout. Um, they always make a Call of Cthulhu game. Um, Oh, this is really nice. Um, we have a piece of uh, Designers and Dragons Next um, by Shannon Applesign. Now, if you've not read uh, Designers and Dragons that, and you're interested in the history of the hobby, then you really should. It's, uh, there are five volumes. Uh, the first four essentially dealing with the first sort of like decades of the hobby. So you're doing one with the 70s, then the 80s, 90s, and uh, the noughties. And um, it, they, it goes through company and company, so it takes through through TSR in the seventy in the book in the seventies, and it goes all the way right up to to to, to, to um, it, it's it's purchased by um, which is the coast and so on, um, and then uh, and he does it for each each of the major companies, and they're incredibly good reads that are interesting because they also track the trends and made and made uh, and major notable events in the hobby throughout that decade. Um, Shannon Applesign is still continuing to write um, for Designers and Dragons, um, first with um, the columns that appear from RPG.net, and then also uh, on with his own Patreon. And here he looks at the history of Coliseum from 1997 to the present day. So this covers um, you know, the downturn up to the point where we had the uh, Call of Cthulhu D20, um, and the monograph revolution um, and so on right up through to really uh, the old Kersian finale in uh, you know 2004 through to 2015 and then the new new Kersian from 2015 to present um, the one we have today so this is a really good article it doesn't just include um, Call of Cthulhu it covers RuneQuest as well um, which has been very successful for Kersian um, and it's content and really um, not just with solid supplements there aren't very many of them but there's more coming um, but there's also a lot of good content on the Johnstown compendium um, community program as well uh, I, it's, it's, it's probably one of the uh, I think it's one of the better community programs because it's at the point small but high quality 
Um, and we have continued uh, Grey Spirits, the cartoon, in Bed Al Azif. Uh, okay. Um, uh, the Mythos on Technology. Um, I, this was a, it, it's, um, it's a fantastic piece by Torin Atkinson, basically um, a, a, a deep one, um, armed for uh, arm, uh, basically armed for war. And that you're just going to go. I want a role playing game where that happens. Can I have that piece? Uh, and then we go into we have Operation Ice Dragon, a 1960s scenario. Now that's. A, period that which isn't often visited by Cold Cthulhu. Um, it's a Cold War scenario set on a remote military base in the Arctic in 1960. That's going to be fantastic. I mean you automatically think of all the um, like Ice Station as ever. It's the first movie you kind of think of when you think of that sort of thing. Now obviously you know there are other movies as well but um, that kind of tone. Um, uh, and then um, basically you know they discover a source of secret, such and, and okay, we've got a submarine in there. With a, that's a really nice set of sort of like um, sort of like exposed um, uh, interior, um, and we've got full colour maps in here. Um, and last, we come to um, uh, Katurufu um, no Yobi Goi. Uh, how new media and indie pirate culture elevated, elevated Call of Cthulhu to the most popular uh, RPG in Japan. Okay, I think this is again. That's going to be an interesting article um, to read uh, because we almost we know it's popular in Japan, but we don't know anything about it ourselves. I mean, we don't. There isn't a lot of people talking about it. Um, but uh, this is by. Um, uh, Andy Katak, sorry, Andy uh, uh, Katak Tukowski, um, who lives out, who is a resident of Japan, and he's in a, basically a knowledgeable about Japanese role playing games, so he's the best person to write this. Um, and that's going to be interesting um, reading in itself, just to find out more, just to get an idea of how uh, the game is viewed outside of the English speaking hobby. Um, Okay, so last we have another look at um, uh, look at sanity and role playing games, obviously related to Call of Cthulhu because that because it's the role playing game that brought sanity into role playing, um, and it's got some sample. There are some sample sanity point costs. Always a useful kind of thing to have. And last we've got a, a list of contributors. So uh, that's by it uh, Al Azif um, issue three. Um, I think this is going to. Uh, this is, looks to be a really interesting read, um, and a good issue uh, to boot. I shall be reviewing it in the future. Um, in the meantime, thank you very much for watching another unboxing in the nook. I will be back with more soon. Um, if you like this one, click the like button. Uh, feel free to comment, or and if you want to see more, please subscribe. Um, I will be doing more of these as long as um, my fingers don't freeze uh, outside in this chilly weather. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye for now.